rather than fresh water and that we're more than likely going to have oysters at the end of this event. Oyster Farmer and Chair of New South Wales Farmers Oysters Committee, Todd Graham with Madeline Cross. News coming up next. Nightlife with Philip Clark and Indira Naidu. Most people would say, oh, well, democracy began in ancient Greece. Everyone believes this, but it's not actually true, is it? Thought-provoking discussions to get you through the night. It's actually an Eastern invention. So we're looking at Syria and Mesopotamia. Yeah, in towns like Babylon and Nippur, in the area of what is today Syria, Iran and Iraq. Nightlife with Philip Clark and Indira Naidu. Every night from 10pm on ABC Radio. Currently 18 degrees in Coffs Harbour and 21 in Port Macquarie. Good morning, Madeline Cross with ABC Mid North and Coffs Coast News. The Weather Bureau says people in southern parts of the Mid-North Coast could be affected by rain associated with an east coast low that's moving south. The offshore system is expected to move towards the coast today with very heavy surf and coastal erosion likely south of Foster. Abnormally high tides are also possible across the region with the Bureau of Meteorology urging people to stay away from the surf. Senior forecaster Peter Otto says some of these coastal conditions could be dangerous for the area. There's area of rain associated with uh, an east coast low, so it's moving towards the Hunter region, and so just fringe parts of that rain could be experienced in the southern parts of the mid-north coast uh, through the latter part of their morning hours, so that's a risk as well. A private helicopter service in Coffs Harbour has been seconded to help with flood recovery efforts on the northern rivers. Precision Helicopters has been working with Essential Energy to help repair power infrastructure as well as flying engineers into isolated areas to fix medical aircraft. Pilot Shane Perkins says he undertook similar work a year ago during flooding in western Queensland. He says this recent flooding disaster has been overwhelming. It's a big two large floods in less than 12 months is, is a bit surreal. Um, we might be trying to uh, get another machine from off another job to be passed out to build flood work. Southern Cross University in Coffs Harbour is helping Maclay River oyster farmers by caring for more than 3 million small oysters. The university's National Marine Science Centre is expected to care for the young oysters for weeks until the river conditions improve. Oyster farmer and chair of New South Wales Farmers Oyster Committee Todd Graham says local farmers may have lost their crops, which would have died in the influx of floodwaters into the estuary. As soon as we get some salt back into the river, we can bring them back down. But the facilities up at SCU, but the National Marine Science Centre up there, are, are great. They have direct access to oceanic water. They've got a lot of tanks and it's a constant flow. Port Macquarie author Keith McMullen has been pre-selected by the Labor Party to contest the seat of Cowper in the upcoming federal election. The seat, held by current MP Pat Conaghan, has been held by the Nationals for decades. Keith McMullen says he'll stand on the issues of health, aged care, housing, climate change and women's safety and knows he's an underdog. I'm coming in with uh, fresh vigour, not a tainted past where I've been complacent because the party machine is behind me and I think that's healthy democracy. Plenty of people have entered into Parliament without experience and they've risen to be very effective local members. The Port Macquarie Hastings Council Mayor hopes an independent investigation into the scraping of the sand berm at Lake Katai will provide more information to the community. On Thursday, council scraped the berm between the lake and the ocean due to rising water levels after heavy rainfall. Prompted by community concerns surrounding the decision-making and timing of the actions, Councillor Peter Pinson and her deputy requested an investigation. Councillor Pinson wants more details on the timing of the scrape of the sand berm last Thursday, saying the lake reached the 1.6 metre trigger point for action at the start of the month. The community has great expectation of council and it is appearing that expectation can't be met because of the legislations and the acts that prevent us from mitigating our flooding. Now, I want that investigated. 
In news elsewhere, the United Nations General Assembly has passed a resolution condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. More than 140 voted in countries voted in favour of the amendment, which also calls for Russia to immediately withdraw its forces from Ukraine. Five countries, including Russia and Belarus, voted against it, while 35 countries abstained from the vote. To the weather, a very high chance of showers as well as the chance of a severe thunderstorm which may lead to flash flooding, damaging winds and large hail. Major flooding is occurring on the Clarence, moderate on the Arara at Coots Crossing. Minor flooding is continuing along the Hastings, Manning and Bellingen rivers. There's a severe weather warning for abnormally high tides and damaging surf for the, for the mid-north coast region. A top of 29 degrees in Coffs Harbour, 27 in Kempsey and Port Macquarie, down to 20 23 in Taree and 25 degrees in Foster. ABC News. To the local news, but thanks for sharing some of the details with us and hopefully that uh, clean-up effort uh, pretty speedy and uh, all back to normal pretty soon. Yeah, we got a crew going over to um, Tweed today to help with the floods too, so I'm in the process of getting them on the road as well, so a pretty busy day. Indeed. We'll, we'll let you get back to that very important work. Thank you so much, though, for joining us this morning. That's Superintendent Tom Cooper from Fire and Rescue New South Wales. A busy day for their crews uh, in the Tamworth region, also sending uh, folks, uh, dispatching them to the north coast to help with the uh, flood situation up there. It's a very difficult uh, time uh, right across New South Wales almost at the moment. Heading up to the latest ABC local news at half past seven. After that, uh, you'll be hearing from the Isolated Children's Parents Association calling for some clarity about uh, boarding school arrangements. We'll also check in uh, on the uh, the discussion about housing at the local government New South Wales conference this week, that coming up before eight o'clock. It's time for the latest news, half past seven. <laughs> Good morning, Lani Odaway with ABC New England Northwest Local News. The New England Highway at Tamworth has been blocked this morning by a truck fire. Bangs were heard shortly after five o'clock this morning near the Armadale Road. Traffic is banking up on the highway heading towards Armadale. Fire and Rescue says the fire was an accident and emergency services are at the scene. Food drops are still planned to reach farmland areas of Tenerfield, which are cut off by floodwaters, although a time has yet to be confirmed. Kemi Maguire has more. The main Brookster Highway connecting the town to Casino remains closed. A geotech specialist from Coffs Harbour met with the council's engineering director yesterday to assess washout damage. Hundreds are stranded and landholders are cut off by smaller dirt roads connecting to the highway. Resilience New South Wales says food drops are being arranged for the Tenterfield region after jobs to Lismore, Corakai, Woodburn, Broadwater and Ballina are complete. In the meantime, State Resilience Coordinator Shane Fitzsimmons says they are looking to reconfigure some choppers to handle the need. There's been an alleged home invasion involving a gun and machete in South Tamworth overnight. Police say they found a man with injuries to his hand and head who was taken to hospital in a stable condition. A woman and child also at the scene weren't injured. A Northwest RSPCA group has pulled together donations to help pets displaced by flooding on the northern rivers. The Gunnedah RSPCA volunteer group has gathered dog and cat food to send across to Lismore. President Linda Taylor says she knows all too well the impacts of floods and she needed to do something to help. As soon as I seen a post come up, I just thought, right, that's it. Our branch can help out and we've sent over dog food and cat food. Um, at this stage, that's probably not near enough, um, but we will help again where we can. Elsewhere, Lismore City Council is urging residents to conserve water after the floods damaged the supply network. The council says potable water supply is running critically low and asks residents and business owners not to use water to clean properties until told to do so. Mayor Steve Krieg says council is working to address the significant damage to infrastructure. We're going to run out of water if everyone turns their tap on and starts hosing out their premises. We've got sewerage issues that need to be fixed. We've got major infrastructure problems with roads, water pipes. It's an endless list of things that need to be fixed and repaired at the moment. 
Meanwhile, water has been cut off to rural parts of Nimbin after an issue with the weir. Malambimbi also has limited reserves of potable water for drinking and household use. The Insurance Council of Australia says more than 10,000 claims have already been lodged in New South Wales after severe flooding. Most of the claims relate to damage to houses and vehicles. Lisa Cable from the Insurance Council is advising people affected by flooding to prioritise health and safety when assessing property damage. Electricity is super important to be aware of. Don't switch your power on until it's been inspected by an electrician. You can start your claims process before you get back to your property. If you're currently in an evacuation centre, give your insurer a call. Back home, University of New England researchers say livestock may help when it comes to managing climate risk. A UNE research group is investigating how livestock convert waste products into protein, potentially helping manage the impacts of greenhouse gases they produce. UNE livestock nutritionist Dr Holland Doherty says the more positive impacts are often overlooked. People would have pigs and chooks behind the house for using kitchen scraps or leftovers, you know, cattle and sheep grazing stubble. It's, it's not really anything new. We've been doing it since we've had livestock. But the true benefits from an environmental standpoint haven't always been quantified or even if they've been quantified, they haven't really been communicated as effectively as they could be, I think. Briefly recapping our top story, the New England Highway at Tamworth has been blocked this morning by a truck fire. Traffic is banking up on the highway heading towards Armadale. Emergency services are at the scene and Fire and Rescue says the fire is an accident. Turning to the weather now, partly cloudy across the region with a medium chance of rain for the northwest and a high chance across the tablelands. There's a chance of a severe thunderstorm with possible heavy rain and hail, which could lead to flash flooding. Top temperatures in Inverell of 29 degrees, Armadale 23 degrees, Tamworth 27 and Moree 33 degrees. ABC News. News is next. It's nearly 6.30. Going somewhere? Don't let signal strength stop you from enjoying your daily dose of drive with Paul Turton. Get your local show wherever you go. With the ABC Listen app. Paul Turton, streaming live online with ABC Newcastle. Farquhar with ABC News. There are more evacuation orders for parts of Sydney as the flood threat continues ahead of the East Coast low, making landfall today. Parts of Picnic Point, Sandy Point and Pleasure Point along the Georges River in Sydney's southwest have been told to evacuate by nine this morning. Parts of East Hills, also along the Georges River and nearby Holsworthy, have also been ordered to leave their homes. Parts of Vineyard in Sydney's northwest have also been ordered to evacuate. The Deputy Premier, Paul Toole, had warned residents it was going to be a tough night. Residents in parts of southwest and western Sydney were ordered to evacuate by 3am, while those living in Camden had less notice after being told at around 8.30 to leave immediately. Ryan Clarkston from the SES says authorities are taking no chances. We've seen water levels rise in the Hawke Spring and Pan River in the Georges River in particular uh, quite rapidly, which has led us to issue uh, evacuation orders for low-lying areas along those river systems um, as a matter of urgency so that people can get out of harm's way. Ukraine's government says the capital, Kyiv, has been hit by a powerful explosion near the central rail station. Witnesses nearby say they heard a huge blast that made the earth shake. Russian troops have made advances on some major cities around Ukraine, including the port city of Mariupol. Meanwhile, Russia's defence ministry has for the first time put a number on how many of its troops have been killed since it invaded Ukraine. Europe correspondent Steve Kinane. Russia claims it has lost 498 soldiers in Ukraine with nearly 1,600 wounded. Those numbers have not been independently verified and Ukraine states the figure is closer to 6,000 dead. Ukraine's emergency services claim that more than 2,000 of its civilians and 10 emergency services personnel have been killed since Russia invaded the country last week. Peace talks between the two nations are due to resume in Belarus later today. Steve Kinane, ABC News. Back home, Islington Public School is closed today after asbestos contamination warnings were issued yesterday in the wake of Tuesday's fire at the Wickham Woolstore buildings. 
Parents picked their children up early yesterday. In a message to families, the schools advised that specialist cleaning of the school grounds is nearing completion. It says learning from home resources are available or parents can drop their children at Ties Hill Public School where Islington support staff will be available today. Meanwhile, the EPA is monitoring the air around the site of the fire. It's placed air monitors at different locations in Newcastle, while a licensed asbestos assessor is investigating whether there is asbestos in the ash that's fallen. EPA spokesman David Gathercole says residents can contact the EPA if they suspect there's asbestos on their property. We want to get through this issue with the ash, um, with residents and um, people nearby. And then what we'll do, we'll work with Fire and Rescue New South Wales in relation to the building uh, and what needs to be done in that respect of any remaining hazardous substances, including asbestos. A hunter advocacy group says as the region transitions away from coal mining, the goal should be to generate triple the number of jobs lost, not just replace them. The Committee for Hunter says multiplying local jobs currently occupied by coal mining and electricity generation into a diverse range of industries must be a priority. Committee CEO Alice Thompson says as the world decarbonises, the hunter's primed to be positioned as a global centre and investment destination for net zero and clean energy. She says it provides plenty of job opportunities. Really our target I think, should be to triple the jobs currently occupied in coal industries in a diverse range of sectors over the next decade. That's looking at around 45,000 jobs and I think with a good plan we can probably exceed that as well. To sport and after a busy schedule in recent weeks, Newcastle Jets defender Jordan Elsie says it's a good time. It's good to have more time this week to refresh the mind. Rescheduled games have meant several short turnarounds between matches. The Jets have a full week to prepare for Saturday's clash with ladder leaders Western United and Elsie says it's a relief. It gives you a little bit more time to refresh the mind and obviously work on things that haven't been clicking too well during games and also gives other players an opportunity that haven't been playing to, to put their best foot forward and show the coach why they should be playing. The Hunter's weather, cloudy, rain and a thunderstorm possibly severe with heavy rain that may lead to flash flooding. 24 the top for Newcastle. On, yes, and more on the way. Just before uh, we spoke to the SES, you were hearing from the ABC trailblazer, Alexandra, who's uh, putting together an awesome silly act to educate kids and young people on the silly act disease. And uh, someone says anyone... Or oh, other immune diseases like type 1 diabetes, celiac disease is little known by people and no one knows what it does in that sense. So it's great work. Let's all help educate on this and on autoimmune diseases, especially for kids. Thank you. Channel Sounds to mates in Morpeth. Your part of the world, your local broadcast. You're on ABC Newcastle Breakfast. Right here on ABC Newcastle Morning. I'll be with you through until the midday. Stuff that you might have missed while you've been out and about. ABC Newcastle. Good morning, Liz Farquhar with ABC Hunter News. There's a flood evacuation order for the central coast for low-lying parts of Tugra Lake at Long Jetty. Heavy rainfall in the past 24 hours with abnormally high tides has caused river and lake level rises along the Wyong River and Tugra Lake catchments. The SES is advising locals in low-lying areas around Berkeley Vale, Chittaway Bay, Chittaway Point, Tacoma, the entrance north and Yarramalong to begin the evacuation process. Nora Creek has received the most rainfall locally with 212 mils. Meanwhile, Morgan Pumper from the Bureau of Meteorology says the East Coast low is sitting off the coast of Newcastle and heavy falls of up to 200 millimetres are possible in the region. With that, it does bring the possibility of bringing down trees and power lines. So within the Hunter, not just Newcastle and along the coast, but throughout the Hunter, there is the chance of, you know, 100 millimetres for places as well as Singleton and Maitland and other spots. 
Islington Public School is closed today after asbestos contamination warnings were issued in the wake of the fire at the Wickham Wool Store buildings. Parents picked up their children early yesterday. In a message to families, the schools advised that specialist cleaning of the school grounds is nearing completion. It says learning from home resources are available today. All parents can drop their children at Ties Hill Public School, where Islington support staff will be available. Meanwhile, the EPA is monitoring the air around the site of the Wickham Wool Store fire. It's placed air monitors at different locations across Newcastle, while a licensed asbestos assessor is investigating whether there's asbestos in the ash that's fallen. EPA spokesman David Gathercole says residents can contact the EPA if they suspect there's asbestos on their property. We want to get through through this issue with the ash, um, with residents and um, people nearby. And then what we'll do, we'll work with Fire and Rescue New South Wales in relation to the building uh, and what needs to be done in that respect of any remaining hazardous substances, including asbestos. Hunter surgeons, speech clinicians and parents have raised fears about a new wave of childhood deafness on the back of COVID delays to grommet surgery. Giselle Wakatama has the story. Today is World Hearing Day and childhood deafness is in focus. In Australia, there have been elective surgery bans amid the pandemic, delaying crucial grommet surgery where a drainage tube is inserted into a child's ear. Parents have told the ABC they've had to beg for an ear, nose and throat or ENT surgery referral after being told wait lists are up to two years. Newcastle ENT surgeon Kelvin Kong says there's now a snowball effect. We've already got a huge wait list for operating time as it is, and so this has been kind of magnified. In New South Wales, the number of people waiting a year or more for ENT elective surgery last year was 25% of people on the list, compared to 7% two years prior. Newcastle speech pathologist Sarita Hamill says the flow-on effects from delayed grommet surgery cannot be underestimated. And it becomes a full trickle-down effect. And how that affects a child is that they can feel very, very insecure. Um, They shut down. It's going to probably be backlogged for years, I'm assuming. Um, And uh, yeah, it will be a fallout, that's for sure. New South Wales Health says children assessed as needing ENT surgery are scheduled on a priority basis with the most urgent always treated first. A hunter advocacy group says the region needs significant investment in affordable housing to meet the needs of its richest resource, people. The Committee for Hunter has set out a plan for the region to diversify as it moves away from coal mining and energy generation. It says the hunter could be a global centre and investment destination for net zero and clean energy, creating 45,000 jobs. But Committee CEO Alice Thompson says housing, infrastructure and services must improve to cater for this. We are a victim of our success. We can see that manifesting in unaffordable housing and we know that will kneecap our future growth and prosperity. So we have worked across committee members and with the state government to say, look, this really does need that investment in enabling infrastructure to unclog a pipeline of developments The Hunter's weather, cloudy, rain and thunderstorms possibly severe with heavy rain, which may lead to flash flooding. Gusty winds, large and powerful surf today. 24 the top for Newcastle, Maitland headed for 23.